Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Jason Foster, the CEO at Signature. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Jason Foster, the CEO at Synagure. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Jason, hello and welcome. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. Okay, so tell me, so you're the CEO at Synagure. So what is Synagure and what is it that you do? Um, great, yeah. So uh, Synagure, we're a data and analytics strategy company. So we uh, we help organizations to uh, to understand the potential that exists within their organization where data can play a part and we help people reach that potential. And uh, I'm the founder and chief exec um, and I've been scaling this business for the last seven years. Oh, very exciting. We'll get into uh, how you got there in a minute. Uh, so we'll definitely come back to that. So if but tell me. Jason. So when you were just a very young person in what in the US we call elementary school, you know, was this the dream? Did you grow think when I grow up, I want to be a founder and CEO of an analytics company? Um, I'm not even sure I felt that when I started the company. So I definitely didn't feel like that when uh, uh when I was at <laughs> primary school was the equivalent. Um <laughs> yeah. No, I did. I, I, um, no, I, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I think. I think it grew. The idea of launching my own business grew as I was, you know, early in my career, and as I was learning a lot more and and saw some opportunity to do things differently from how I saw organisations do it. Um, but no, I, I, I actually have no recollection of of what I wanted to be when I grew up when I was younger. I've, I've been asked that before, and I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I, I have no memory of, of of always wanting to be something, you know, an astronaut or you know, a soccer player, a football player or anything like that. So, um, so no, this just happened. So when you were going through school, you know, what, uh, were there certain subjects that you liked that you, you focused on that you gravitated towards, you know, um, as you went yeah. through, you know, school and, in, and into university? Yeah. I, do you know what? I, uh, the ones that I have a real strong fond memory of the uh, either the the subject or the teacher more more appropriately um with were the ones like business studies um the ones that were a little bit more vocational and taught me about the world and i and i don't you know the real world actually and 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 um and that wasn't by choice but i just look back and i go actually the things i really enjoyed uh were those ones where i could sort of get hands on with with living and and hands on with with the way you know business and the world worked and and certainly when i got to um uh, to university and, and sort of higher education, I, I zoomed into that a bit more and and leaned on a course that was focused on uh, business um, uh, leadership management and information management, information systems. It was called. Oh, um, so it's like a real nice mix of all the kind of like angles of what is now the career that I ended up in, which was around business. It was around achieving outcomes for organizations it was understanding how systems and processes and data and technology plays a part in organizations and how to be a manager and a leader uh, in in organizations and it, it was such a great foundational course again looking back um that it put me in a good stead for for building a career in in you yeah, know what i ended up doing oh i love that yeah it definitely is a is a nice uh, correlation there um so so then where'd you go from there after university what, what was your career path yeah, I, I um 
uh, during, during my course was a uh, what we call here a sandwich course so you, you work you, you university for a year you go and work uh, for a year and then you go back to university for the final sorry two two years of, of education one year of working and then final year uh, where you do your your dissertation and, and get your final grade uh, and in that year I worked uh, in a retailer in the UK called Debenhams um, and it, I was doing project management and uh, business analysis was the kind of the role that I had for a year. And I was collecting business requirements and I was launching new systems um, from within the retail um, head head office. Um, so when I finished my university degree, I went back there on the graduate scheme and worked my way around the organization, front of house retail to finance, to procurement, to supply chain, to technology and worked my way around the business and ended up in a... a um, a customer analytics and a data um, uh, and business intelligence and data science function within uh, sort of get, straddle technology and marketing. Um, and I, I uh, yeah, learned my craft about data and and um, how data can play a part to drive better marketing campaigns, but drive the business as a, as a, as a whole and about early kind of understanding of data warehouses and, and, and how technology knits together to create dashboards and reports and um, and then I left there uh, after a few years and I joined a, a niche uh, UK based um, uh, data warehousing and business intelligence uh, uh, consultancy. Um, and what we used to do as a small team at the time, we used to go into organizations um, and help them define KPIs for their business at a kind of strategic board level and then help to build systems um, and reports and dashboard that help to visualize those KPIs and cascade the communication of those those KPIs and driving some of the behavior that the board was looking to drive through the organization. So it was sort of um, data and b before it became big data and before it became sort of data science, but it was really that kind of heartland of helping to work out how do you uh, build an organization that uses data and metrics and KPIs to really understand how the business is performing and, and drive performance that way. Um, and, um, and then I left there after about 10 years and I joined, um, a global retailer called Marks and Spencer sort of head headquartered in the UK, but global and online. Um, and I ran, um, a new initiative focused on big data and, and enabling the organization with big data and plugging that into the roots and branches of the business at the sort of the, um, physical retail all the way through to digital, um, loyalty marketing, um, supply chain e-commerce sort of end-to-end -end with the business and, and giving data a really big name and a, and a, and a um an opportunity in the in the organization to really drive that forward uh, and then i left there and, and set up the business so it's sort of like a, a bit of a kind of like data thread through all of it and a and a business oh. thread through all of it that's really kind of um yeah stood me in good in good stead oh that's i love that and so so tell me what was how did you make that it's a very big decision to start a business yeah. Well, what was the driver? How did you say, I'm going to go do this? I, um, when I was in a consulting business for about 10 years, I I'd started it, uh, I joined it, sorry, when there were about 10 people and we got acquired when we were about a hundred people and I stayed there for a little bit longer. And I always felt that that was something that I could do. Um, and then when I, when I left there and went into industry, I wanted to kind of experience sort of being the change and sort of seeing that change actually happen rather than advising from the outside. Uh, and because we were doing some quite innovative, new, fresh things within the the team I was in and, and the work we were trying to do, um, there wasn't really an advisor, uh, a, a company that was out there that I could really lean on to help give me advice about how to really do these things properly. So um, I, I kind of like this burning desire to, sort of came back to go, I want to create this business that I wish existed now so that I could get them to help me to be really good at the job I was doing at the time at Marks and Spencer. So um, an opportunity came to to move on. Um, I took Christmas off one year and I, I sat at my, my kitchen table at the start of the new year and and played around with some ideas about what the market might need for support and help and guidance with becoming more a sort of data guided business. And um yeah, tried out a few ideas, tried out a few propositions, um, spent a lot of time talking to my wife, trying to convince her it was the, a good thing to do, um, which she she sort of half bought into and just said, let's see how it goes. And yeah, luckily we were, um, we were able to win win some clients and, and build and build the business from there. But it was really a, this kind of desire to create a business that I, re that I wanted to sort of go into organizations and help them to make sense of all this craziness, which is using data somehow, because most people found that really challenging to know what to do and, and just help sort of hold their hand through that journey. So yeah, that's the kind of business I wanted to create. 
Oh, it's very nice. And, and, and congratulations on, on succeeding in that. And uh, that's no small feat. So yeah, thank you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. And so, so tell me then, you know, you've used data a lot through your journey, you've been involved in data. So, you know, what is your definition? And how do you of data? And how do you work with it today? Um, I got, 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 uh, gosh, my uh, definition of data, I think, is um, is an interesting one. I, I think the definition of uh, what's important is the definition of how data is used and and how you and how you get value from it. So, that um, I think the definition of data is rightly slightly different for everybody. But I kind of like um, I use that word to mean um, it is in, in its broadest sense. Uh, uh, you know, an organization uses data is, is is the same as saying insight. It's the same as saying analytics. It's kind of like the um, the summary word to mean um, uh, understanding what's happening and and making best use of it, and and, and importantly trying to drive value out of it. Um, so we, so I use it in a few ways. One is it's the tool um, for the work that we do with customers. It's the tool that we help customers use in order to help drive better decisions and improve their business. And internally, even as a small um, scaling business, we use it day in, day out to help drive our um, understanding of the market, understanding of who is likely to you know buy from us, to understand the um, interactions that different people have with our business. Um, to look at what's working, what's not, to look at our margins, to look at our opportunities. So we use it all the time in all parts of the business to help us make our decisions about how we grow the business, what's going well, what's not going well. Um, and um, so, yeah, we, we use it sort of two sides, one to help run the business and one to help our customers develop their businesses. And actually, we've got a, um, a set of values um, that we that we sort of have within the business. And one of them is, is B data. Um, and that's all about kind of, um, you know, uh, practicing what we preach, I guess. You know, we talk a lot about how this is important to the organization. So we want to and feel necessary and right to do that for our own business as well. Very nice. So do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Um, so I think... Uh, so, da so data management, I think generally is quite an important topic. It's, um, I think it's sort of, it, if, so for me, it's the overarching, um, uh, theme, uh, uh, that where sort of data governance sits, but the management of data is all about sort of building that trust in the data that you have and, and make sure it's, it's good. It's well looked after it's clean, it's, um, secure and all those good things, um, and I think there's all, always a bit of confusion actually about data management, which which is um, it, it, in that it's sort of where it manifests itself is that people try and do data management for their organization without really aligning it to sort of trying to create a, a specific set of outcomes other than foundationally making data good in the business, which is the right thing to do. And there's two sides to data management. One is the pure kind of operational need to have good quality data within systems and processes that help you run the business and not screw up you know customer orders or um, paying your employees at the right amount of money and, and these sorts of things that are like day-to-day -day operational things that your technology and your systems allow you to do but bad data gets it wrong all the time or can get it wrong and then there's the how do you extract and exploit and use that data to drive analytical and insight sort of use cases so it's kind of got two two arms and and it's all all connected um so and the reason i give that context is because that question about is there going to be more or less of this needed going forward in some ways it's going to need to be more because more digital more systems more interactions more touch points that are online more of a breadcrumb and a trail means more of a necessity to get data management right um, and also when we think about kind of AI and, and sort of building models and algorithms that are driving decisions, if those decisions are based on data and, and, and information that isn't good quality and isn't well managed, then the decisions that those engines, those algorithms make is going to be, is going to be poor. It's going to be, um, and actually there's a really great example. So, um, uh, ASICs of, of, um, uh, the, the sports brand, uh, have launched a campaign to drive up better quality of data in the images of people who are fit and healthy. 
because if you asked a, an image create an ai image creator to create a, a, a visual of a person who's fit and healthy there'll be a chiseled you know old old-fashioned perfect body washboard stomach huge muscles chiseled jaw and the reality is that a very small portion of people are actually like that but what the what the the algorithms have learned on are those images so asics are trying to build this stockpile of you know real people so that when you when you when algorithms make a decision about what a fit person looks like it's got it's based on good data so that, that's the importance of data management is getting that kind of stuff right so um, so I think that will increase the need for data management. Um, however, the kind of like the reverse of that is technology will also get better at doing some of that data management for us. So therefore that will kind of like uh, over time, you'll automate, you'll iterate, you'll get better at data management using technology. So I think net net it will increase because of the importance of data, but there'll be some ups and some downs along the way. I love that you bring up that uh, ASICS campaign uh, in uh, you know, it's such a good example of how data can be used to change the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah and totally. so exciting. It's just, it's an exciting space to be in, I think, because of yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I I think it's um, you know, that that that's just one tiny example, and and you know, you could mm -hmm. argue that you know that's a marketing campaign. It's all about driving attention to them so they can sell more trainers. But but they're trying to do some good and they're trying to improve the situation. We can just complain about it or we can do something about it. And that's right. the same across, you know, within a business, you know, poor data management, poor data quality means poor decisions, means, as I said before, you know, customer orders being delivered to the wrong address or whatever happens in the real world. And those are real problems. They cost money, they cost time, they cost brand damage, all these things. And so good data management is needed to 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 run the business, let, let alone build models and and do, you know, fancy kind of dashboards and that sort of thing. So, yeah, super important. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launch pad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. So tell me, what advice would you give to people looking to get into career in data management? And especially since you have such expertise in leadership, you know, and even in leadership. Mm. the i think the craft of data management is is pretty varied actually um and um so so i suppose it sort of depends on uh the kind of uh, the kind of area within data management you know you've got data quality we've got metadata management we've got access management we've got data retention we've got you know we've got all these topics that sit under that discipline of data management so i think depending on which of those things are more attractive. I think it changes the, what what you might sort of do, what you might go into, what you might look at. Um, and, and actually, I think a real, I think, you know, what, what can people think about? I think a real care for why we're doing these things, I think is fundamental. Like what's the point of, of doing better data management? I've given some examples and they're, they're the real world examples that manifest themselves in data management problems. So I think a real care for the outcome and the care for solving real world business problems or real 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 societal problems is like um, I think should be a good basis. But again, I, I, it depends where you're coming from. So there's like a real leadership uh, angle. There's a technology and sort of architecture angle. There's a um, system development and and data product implementation angle. Um, and data management sort of is a topic that needs all of that stuff. So. I think it's real sort of like open um open game for how for where people can go within data management and of course data management itself is only one category within doing data good doing data well and data, what we call data strategy which is even broader and um so I think there's a real there's a real opportunity to kind of this isn't just about sort of maths and statistics and data science this is about uh, leadership it's about management it's about product development it's about system development it's about processes it's um, about culture within a business it's about how you organize yourselves it's about collaboration there's all these kind of great things that you need to be good at um, and depending on what you're good at and what your passion is there's sort of all these routes in all these routes in and out of uh, of data management as a theme um, so I yeah I, I, I don't think there's a kind of depending on what stage you're at you might sort of be opening your opportunity or trying to laser focus in and I think if you're opening your opportunity then the broadest experience possible across uh, data within an organization is really valuable 
Um, and if we're trying to hone in, it depends on what floats your boat and what passion you have and, and what your skills are. So, um, yeah, I can see all sorts of varied careers within within that space. It's very, very, very true, you know, and, you know, so and just I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like, you know, explore, you're encouraging people to explore yeah, because there are so many aspects of data management. Because you're right, it's not just the data scientists. You know, there's yeah. so many different roles and ways to get involved, and um, different. And you know, it, like you say, depending on your passion. So if you follow your passion, right, and just yeah. be open yeah. to to any part of it. Yeah, I, I think so. It, it's um, and, and that shouldn't almost shouldn't be daunting for people. I think that's just a really um, great opportunity to explore, to try different things, to get involved with with um solving business problems to um get involved with collaborating across different teams um i think any 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 degree you know even any um education that you've had can 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 be a route into this um because there's you know there's a lot talked about as i said about sort of statistics and maths and the sort of science behind this but mm-hmm. actually most of the thing that gets this to work properly is the art behind this and the art is the things like you know, change and management and influence and um, creativity and, and um, you know, presenting and um, what the industry often calls soft skills, which I don't really like that phrase, but it's the kind of like, it's the bit that really makes this real. And, and this is really about people. So anything that makes you good at being with people <laughs> and managing people and interacting and collaborating, I think is great foundation for this sort of stuff as well. No, so if it's, you know, so get uncomfortable, right? If you're, if it's hard, you know, it's a skill that can be practiced, right? Those, yeah. those soft skills, as you, as you say, <laughs> I know there's no yeah. better word for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I haven't found one. I haven't found one yet, but it, I, I suppose the point, the point is if, if you're not, if you're someone that doesn't want to um, stay in or go into the, um, the kind of like the maths, the science, the, the hard, the hard skills angle, then there's still loads of opportunity and still loads of potential that can help, um, you know, for, have a really fulfilling career in in data and data management. Very nice. Is there a skill that you um, that surprised you that you needed? Um, well, I, I've I've not come I've not come from a sort of technical route actually, technical or or sort of um, maths route. So I've been surprised at what I've been able to do without a certain set of skills. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if that's not quite answering what you asked, but I, <laughs> I haven't. And and it's a it's a good lesson I found for people is that I haven't had to be good at technology. At I've never done data, you know, I've never done engineering yeah. or um, yeah. coding or data modeling or any of these things. I understand them. I understand what they're for. I understand how to apply them. I've learned um, what good looks like and all these things. But I, I haven't come from a route of technology, so it's of uh, building technology. So it's it's always been a a, a kind of yeah, uh, it's a shock and a surprise that. I've been um, I've been able to sort of craft a career in sort of leadership in this space uh, without that, but but actually now I'm where I, you know in in the in the role I'm in now I kind of see that more and more that's necessary as well. It's necessary to have people that that haven't got those skills in in positions of leadership in in certainly in businesses and things roles like chief data officer because um, it makes you more of a rounded business and commercial and um, change leader. Um, and not sort of buried in technology and systems and and coding, which which often can be the case. Um, I'm not sure I've been surprised at anything I have needed though. Um, uh, I, I think there's some really important things. I, I think I sort of mentioned about being really good at um, at kind of understanding people, and even if you're an introvert um, by nature, having the um, the appetite to to collaborate and learn from other people but contribute really strongly and and that can mm-hmm. be uncomfortable some people that aren't sort of extrovert necessarily but um, I think the ability to communicate and collaborate well has been one of those really like fundamental building blocks throughout my career certainly and what I see where I see people be most successful now and it sounds like you know you, you're a founder you're a CEO and you haven't gone you know hey I reached my 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 goal you know I'm, I'm successful it sounds like you're still learning you're still exploring you're oh, still yeah. yeah yeah I've not I've not reached anything I I'm I'm start of my journey um with this and and uh uh yeah we've had some success but there's no there's sort of it's a journey rather than like a specific end point but um, yeah, yeah I, I never stopped learning and I, and I I think whatever role I've been in 
there's always been so much scope sideways to learn and sort of upwards to learn actually and, and retrofit what you thought you understood previously as well um, and unpick what you thought you understood previously so I yeah I've never found that I've sort of reached any kind of potential within any specific role but I certainly have got bored in roles before and and sort of felt that I'm I, I want a new challenge, but that doesn't necessarily mean I've reached, you know, everything there is to know. So, and I just get bored very easily and I'm, I love change. So I kind of have thrived on, on trying new things and, and, and going down some different avenues. And um, so, yeah, I, I, there's never, there's no end, there's no end to the learning. And, and I think that's a good thing. It's because yeah, it keeps it exciting. I agree. Yeah. That's very nice. So Jason, I would be remiss if I did not uh, ask how uh, people can uh, find out more about Sinajur and, and how to contact you for your services. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, well, you can find me at, uh, I'm probably best is on LinkedIn, um, Jason Foster on, on LinkedIn, the company's Sinajur. Uh, our website is Sinajur.com. Um, I also host a podcast actually, uh, Hub and Spoken, it's called. So if you search for Hub and Spoken uh, on any of the platform, any of the podcast platforms, um, you'll find me on the other side of the mic. <laughs> uh, and um, but yeah, LinkedIn is the best place to to, to find me and us uh, or, or our website, Sinajor.com. Well, very nice. Well, we will be sure to get all those links posted on the podcast page when uh, so uh, everyone can find you and reach out. Well. Jason, this has been so great. Uh, I really appreciate your time today. No problem. It's been great for me too. I love sort of sitting back and reflecting. So thank you for prompting those questions and forcing me to think about some of that, which I don't usually. So appreciate that. Well, thanks again for being here. And thanks to all of our listeners out there. And if you want to keep up to date on the latest podcast and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, people. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.